Hello everyone, welcome back. We're going up against Mount Union this time. Um, so we're seeing a few different um, possible choices going in. My name is Aubrey. I'm CQ9 and welcome back. Yes, welcome back to our double header match. So we do have, we, we did play Tiffin just before this. Um, and we did end up 2 owing that game. That was very good. It was very close too. So a little bit of a stressful one. Um, to go right back into another match right after. So we're, we'll see how this goes here, but and hopefully it will go pretty well. You're expecting some fun characters to go up against. Ah, yes. So we have Zelda, Snake, Pikachu. Yep, those are the three characters we're expecting to see. The, those are the three characters we have seen them use before throughout the season. We did our little bit of research. So <clears throat> definitely going to be an interesting one to to work around here. But, Very interesting. I mean, we're going to have to figure it out if we want to get it done. So we will see how it goes. We saw a lot of Pikachu practice and Zelda practice <laughs> going on over there. Um, yep. Snake practice was interesting. Let's just say that. It sure it was some practice of all time. We'll give it that. But <laughs> Snake is probably the matchup that uh, I feel like we're probably the most comfortable in out of those three. So I, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world that yeah. the snake practice was uh, suspect. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the this uh, this character roster is. Not the most enjoyable for uh, for our character roster in particular no. here. So we will see some interesting playing today. Um, we also might see some interesting characters come out too, out of uh, wherever they come from. I don't Ooh. know. Where the are we... character select screen? Yes, apparently. Okay. What is yep. this? What is this music? What are we going for music? I don't know, but I'm in. <laughs> this is cursed. This is so cursed. Fitz, I'm why? In. I'm in. Fitz, Fitz why? This is, this is why you're my favorite. Okay. Oh! Well, it not quite one of not quite the character we were expecting. Still not any more entertaining as the ones we were expecting. No. <laughs> but a little bit of a uh, little bit of Sora gameplay. Wahoo! Yippee! Yaha! Here we go. All right, let's get you're it. Our favorite characters to go against and you can see that Fitz is very thrown off by this already a little bit but still keeping it pretty even see the thing is here that uh, I actually think we almost prefer prefer seeing a Sora over some of their other characters uh, but so watch, honestly, it, watch it be the snake wow, player what the heck are you cooking Fitz you are cooking right now Fitz with the has... double bell incredible pressure Fitz has decided that I am going to cook, and I don't care what anyone else thinks. Fitz is angry at the Sora for existing, and I love it. <laughs> well, isn't that in our entire team? <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I love this. Mess him up. Our entire team loves the concepts of DLC characters, but also hates them. Ooh, just barely actually off on the spacing, not even the timing. But Fitz having incredible pressure right now. Just keeping keeping the pressure on the Sora, not giving him a chance to breathe. This is incredible. I genuinely think Fitz probably prefers this to some of the other characters they had lined up that we were expecting. So he's making full use of it here. Uh, missing his bell there, but that's not completely the end. Sora is very floaty, but this might... <laughs> Never mind. True combo. He needs it. I mean, he kind of does, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Um, Fitz just needs one more attack on the Sora, bring it to bring it back to even throwing an orange because of course, you know. Mm, he one just needs one real solid hit game. and that will do it. Can't spot dodge Pac-Man grab. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the only grab in the game that you can spot dodge. That is one thing a lot of people uh, don't understand I'm noticing and half the time it's not even that it's it's not even that you don't know that. It's just he's the only character, so you're used to going, oh, I'm going to spot dodge because they're going to grab, and then you remember, right, uh, I thought he was going to grab, and then I spot dodge. Because normally, that beats that, but not against Pac-Man. Because why, because why would it? Exactly. 
Uh, like that grab there, I think the actual uh, Hydra kind of pushed him down into it, and either way, I will take it. Fitz trying to rack the damage back up in his favor here, doing a pretty good job of just slowly getting it back on his side here. Thinking, um, fortunately for him, it 12-ish damage isn't that much. Never mind, that's a little bit more than 12. Mm -hmm. Sora uh. has a lot of combos that it is uh, Nair and Fair there, so... Having having a kill option out of your nair that you can do out of shield is very good for Sora. So trying to work around that. Yep. <laughs> and uh, Fitz just saying hi, N no combo for you. W was actively getting comboed and said grab. Stop that. <laughs> love that, and I love that F smash. I'm telling you, Fitz is so good at getting these F smashes. He's just, he just knows when you're gonna run at him like an idiot. I know, because it's very annoying when he does it to me. I'm like, God dang it. I just wanted to run at you. Why did you kill me for it? Uh, living on a prayer. Honestly, was not expecting him to live that. I'm getting just a little sense. bit more extra credit. Any little bit helps, though. All this little bit helps. This should be a kill here. Yep. yep. But 30% going into zero is still not is still something. It's um, it's definitely not bad, and you know Fitz can make it work. He's already shown that he can do he can do just fine from less. So he I think he can make it work. Getting a nice counter there on the Sora, just getting using that as a get off me tool because Fitz has been all over the Sora's options here, and I love to see it. Yep. Fitz has really been experimenting with that side B out of Bell instead of uh, just a weaker aerial like up like up air. So yeah, honestly, he has been hitting them quite a fair amount. Mm -hmm. I like to see it. It's it's good experimentation. Uh, it, it is higher kill power and all of that jazz. So I do like the thought process there. Uh, still seeing uh, Sora finally deciding to take some more percentage, or finally deciding to get the opportunity to get to take some more percentage. So now Fitz with the bell here, gonna be quite a bit of pressure. Just trying to make it hit. <laughs> Murders that bell, didn't hit Fitz, but that bell is dead. Well, he did not like the bell, and frankly, honest, if I'm going against a Pac-Man, I won't. I don't blame him. I won't want there to be a bell either. <laughs> yeah, I don't really blame him. Oh, nice shield. Got it out of the way. The Sora is fishing for the kill here with these Nair uh, into S smashes. Okay. I don't know what happened there. Uh, he got hit by his by the melon as he side beat up, but just trying to get some pressure. He's gonna neutral get up. Watch this. Oh, Sag. <clears throat> Well, well that doesn't Blizzard is a little too close to the <laughs> shield. So Fitz recognizing that, doing, using his up smash out of shield to get that stock. And we are heading into this next uh, player with a stock up. So the, so the characters that we know of, besides the Sora that came out of nowhere, we have Pikachu, Zelda, and Snake. And this Sora kind of threw a wrench in the whole plan. Mm -hmm. So now we know for sure that at least one of those aren't happening. Um, I would be genuinely shell-shocked in a disbelief if it, if, it if it replaced the Pikachu. If it because was the Pikachu. Because it, it will not replace the Pikachu. I'm telling, that, I'm telling yes. you that right now. The Pikachu so, is very good. So my assumption is that probably replaced the snake, is my guess. Yeah. Um, and if we see a character that is not uh, Zelda, Snake, or Pikachu, I will be very sad. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, looking. So if if there is like a, a random character comes out now, I think we're all just going to be confused. Um. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you kind of got to roll with the punches. I mean. Whole character select screen is available. We do it too. We pull out some random characters sometimes, so. Yeah, but one of our characters has made the entire roster. Exactly, so we pull out random characters sometimes. <laughs> you know, when you main the entire roster, you can just kind of do that. So, getting some stage bands up in here just for this last stock on Fitz. We'll see if he can get some extra credit out of here. 
which hopefully he can get one. Um, even if he doesn't, it is not the worst thing in the world because even if we're at, just because we're a stock up now, even if it goes back to even, that at least gives us the counter pick advantage. Yep. So no matter what, this is already beneficial that Fitz was able to take that game. Yep. I think we're expecting the Zelda. I would expect the Zelda, yes. I would expect the Pikachu to anchor just because of... <laughs> yeah, I would expect the Pikachu to anchor just simply because he's... Pikachu is just simply the better character. But I wouldn't be shocked to see it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, at least we know the Sora did not replace the Pikachu. Well, I mean, yeah, it wouldn't, but... Uh... Crazier things have happened. <sighs> I would genuine. I would. I would just leave. <laughs> you would just. You would just leave. <laughs> um. Lessons like um. So our matchup got probably yeah, a I'm lot out. easier, but I'm just leaving. <laughs> Goodbye. Um. I I'm not horribly surprised that the Pikachu came out, but I did expect the Zelda. But th this is going to be a difficult fight here. This Pikachu is very solid and just. This character is just really good. Uh, he's very, very difficult to hit. And for someone like Pac-Man, that's going to be challenging. As you can yep. see here, taking 66% before he's really gotten an opening here. Pikachu just has so many options for coverage and damage here, getting so much. Unfortunately, Pikachu is like the worst matchup for most people in the roster. Um... Yeah, Pikachu has... Uh, an insane matchup spread. Now, most of that is mostly just uh, like on paper Pikachu. It's very hard to execute, oh. but uh, he's dead for that. Uh, yep. So this Pikachu is quite solid. Yes. So this this is the main challenge for us here, and we knew this coming into it that this Pikachu is going to be the main issue here. So. I think I already know what we're going to do. And I would be surprised if we deviate from that plan any. So. <sighs> is it is there a person who mains the entire roster? Oh, uh, I think it's Ness. I didn't want specifics, but okay. I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it, that's why it literally doesn't matter. I think we're going Ness. I think we should go Ness. Because it's probably the only character that we have that can uh, reliably hit this little yellow rat. <laughs> I hate Pikachu and Pichu, man. I hate them. I... Pikachu's so cute. I don't like him. Cute. Don't care. Don't like him. But he's so cute. Mid at best. I think of like millions of people across the globe would disagree with you. And I, it would not be the first time I've disagreed with the, the majority of people across the globe. So CQ9 <laughs> is about ready to go and fist fight half of the people in the world over whether Pikachu is cute or not. Oh, please. That's not even my worst Smash opinion. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Good question. I don't know. <laughs> No, I, I do not actually think that I am uh, in the minority there in saying that Pikachu is very annoying in this game. Yes. Uh, I don't like Pikachu. We're having a debate. Uh, we're having a little bit of a decision-making debate here, but I definitely think that is the correct call. At the end of the day, you just kind of have to play the player in front of you. Um, Wolf is definitely better just <laughs> against the Zelda and can do okay oh. against the the Pika, but just gotta play the one in front of you. And no, we are not going to great keep offensive, Chris. I would that would actually <laughs> probably make me leave. <laughs> like nah, I'm like nah, I'm, I'm out. I, we go to great keep offensive. I'm walking out of here. Goodbye. I'm going back to um, sleep. <laughs> Umu and Chris just gentlemen agreement going to great cave offensive. I would be down. I would nah. sit here and I would just be like, let's go. I'm out of there. I, I'm leaving. I'm going back to sleep. I ain't I, watching that. Well, I also hate great cave offensive, but if you do it for the bit. Okay, but hear me out. Chris just locks in Sonic and goes great cave. <laughs> like, he picks great cave offensive and locks in Sonic. I think that's one of the few characters Chris can't play. He doesn't need to. It's Sonic. He just run away on great cave offensive. But... 
We ain't dealing with that now. We got a Ness versus Pikachu on Town and City. Let's get it. This is going to be a little bit of a difficult challenge here. Ness is one of the few characters that are going to be able to hit Pikachu the best. Just because his hitboxes are certifiably preposterous. Mm -hmm. This little child is a sortie. Yes, of course. And that Pikachu is also... Pikachu is sortie, right? Or brawl? Or am I completely incorrect? What? <laughs> no. Uh, sortie as in Ness has insane disjoints. Yes. Uh, I'm, that's what I'm referring to, not like Pikachu suddenly has a sword in the middle of a fight. Okay, no, uh, <laughs> Pikachu, no, he does have to get close, and as we can already see that Ness is the correct decision here. Being able to actually be a little positive in the percent, he Ness's hitbox is covering so much of the screen, just makes it so much easier to hit Pikachu. He's such a small target that having those options that cover a wide amount of space is so important. Yep. I can tell uh, all players on the screen are having a lot of fun with this. Oh, playing against Pikachu is such an enjoyable experience. Yes. Um, going in, we're Nice going coverage with the PK Fire. Chris is doing a really nice job here. The Pikachu also doing a really good job of keeping it even. Uh, but Chris is just a little bit in front. All we need is Chris to just come up first on against the stocks <laughs> and then Pikachu jab just feels so insulting. Ooh, we that, definitely take that. That was trade. a trade. <laughs> uh, just this should kill. Yep. yep. Able to spot dodge the grab knows that is such a common kill option for nest players. Got to be careful here. This is genuinely scary. Okay. Nice. Nice back air. Calling him out on the quick attack and keeping it very even. Yep. And taking very little percentage while doing so. It's 24 to 0. Well, 37 to 0. Um, nothing in the long term that a few combos or a few straight hits can't fix. So. Mm, I, uh, I really think that the Ness was the correct option here. Look, looking at this coverage that this Ness has just because of his hitboxes or so much better than I think even Wolf would have. But now we gotta be a little scared. We have no jump, but that forward air managing to uh, secure him safe package back this passage back to the stage. Does need to rack up a bit more percent here. You've been taking a lot of damage without dealing too much. Yep. Um, I love that recovery onto the platform. What is the Pikachu gonna do about it? Nothing, that's why you did it. I like that coverage. Healing fair amounts of coverage, punishing them, punishing them for that quick attack onto the ground, um, getting a Pikachu, getting a combo off. Yeah, quick attack is such an insane option. It's so good, but you know the the percent might be in the Pikachu's favor, but the kill power sure ain't. <laughs> And Chris putting that to good use, taking that stock despite being quite a decent amount of percent down. Now, incredible magnet stall. Love that. Yes. Getting him an opening to get him 30%. Now you just got to hold on to the stock. It's going to be difficult, but if you can avoid the openings like that one, yep. uh, you could keep the stock. But, uh, the stock. but, you know, Chris just, Chris just wanted to show what I was talking about. Wanted to put a visual to it so you know what i appreciate it yes we, we love our visual uh yeah, keep, keep, keeping it uh close to the content i see yes he, he wants to keep it very that was easy. weird that dj did a weird animation but you know it's all right keeping keeping chris down at zero percent and this pikachu's taking a lot of damage nice mm -hmm. almost got the kill there i think that up air yeah. kill uh 110 percent uh 26 is nothing to, that is another huge positive in this matchup. Not only are Ness's hitboxes big, uh, trading is heavily in Ness's favor. Um, because Pikachu has so many multi-hits, struggles from the same kind of issue that Pit does with trading. Um, so Ness having those really strong hitboxes to just clang and trade with is so powerful. Oh, parry. Just got to get one real solid hit. That was almost it, but the Tejal able to cover him. Yep. Yep. 
That's the coverage. That and is the coverage I'm talking a about. Loud, nice coming from the other rooms. <laughs> That's the coverage I'm talking about that the nest gives. Those hitboxes are so big, they're able to just cover that space so effectively. So I love that swap. Made the correct decision in going nest. I wholeheartedly believe so. So our assumption is that they are throwing in Zelda next. It's either Zelda or Snake, and I feel like they're not going to throw in Snake versus Ness. Yeah. Um, it's it's a pretty good matchup for Ness, just because Ness can go and just eat the explosives and heal from it. Um, it's definitely not impossible for the Snake. It's not the worst matchup in the world, but it's probably more beneficial to go Zelda here. Ness lacking a a solid reflector he has one but it's very committal uh in his f smash as uh side magnet will not do anything against phantom it will do something against uh din dinner's flame uh, din's flame i think it's din's flame i think it's din's flame because it's not dinro because that's breath of the wild yeah. It won't do anything against Nehru as well. I mean, no, because that's just uh, that that's Zelda's neutral B, so that's not a projectile. Well, I'm just thinking because like yeah, her it... movements are based on the three. Yeah, it's things. It, yeah. From the the three. What are they called? Uh, like what three goddesses. Like no, no. The, the, no well, they're... in Breath of the Wild, they're the dragons. So. But yes. I don't know what they are, like, in earlier Zeldas. Did you ever Zeldas. play Ocarina of Time? I, the only Zelda games I have played are Breath of the Wild Tears. Oh! Alright, I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> I'm out. What in the world? Come on. There's a Sonic on screen. I think I, I, I'm so sorry, Chris. I think I spoke this into existence sorry. earlier. This is my fault. My B. <laughs> uh, I... Uh... This is my B. I, I spoke this into existence. I'm so sorry. What in the world, man? Why do they just... What's the point in doing character research anymore? What? What is the point when they could just pull out a Sonic <laughs> they, and they, they like, never where? follow it. They, they never actually use the characters we research. I swear. The last game they did. Oh my word. But Chris, still doing a really good job of getting some damage, has yet to take any. Well, I need to stop talking. <laughs> I keep speaking things into existence. Commentators curse and all that. But Chris, still doing a very nice job, just keeping it even. You know, Sonic on Town and City is yeah. not the most pleasant experience, but if you can get a little bit of a lead, it will be very helpful. And technically, Chris has a lead. Technically. Uh, with with just being a stock up in the crew battle, so we'll see if he's able to make use of it. Yep. The main thing I'm looking for right now is probably just at least one extra life uh, to make it easier on whoever we're sending in next. Mm -hmm. Definitely so. want at least one stock extra credit. But Chris, looking like that very well could be the case, doing a lot of damage here, calling out the Sonic quite well with his aggressive yeah. attacks. And he has been um, very good on just keeping even, not even, eh, now it's more closer. Yeah. See, uh, genuinely, this Sonic's issue, he's approaching too much. He's trying to play the video game with Chris, and that's a very bad idea. I don't recommend <laughs> that. You don't like uh, to play the video game with Chris. Because that happens. Especially, well, especially playing Sonic, your main goal is to just uh, interact with your opponent as little as possible. And Chris showing as to why that's the goal, taking that stock. So already some extra credit here. Very, very nice to see. Looking for some more. Going to be challenging to get, especially at 140, but definitely not impossible. We've seen him do it before. Seen Chris do Stranger Things before, which is which has been a treat. Let's just say. Stranger that. Things. That's a good show. But and he is dead. <laughs> there is the yeah, smash. So, a little bit of extra credit here. That's really, really good. Especially with a character like Sonic, who can be so, so just dominating in the matchup chart, uh, matchup spread-wise. Very, very, very important to have a stock lead on Sonic. So, by default, 
giving the next player a stock lead against Sonic is so important. It is so critical to have that lead. Yep. And so I am seeing... We are seeing who we're throwing in. I'm not surprised. I am not this either. This is going to be a little difficult. Or maybe do I just not know my matchups um, like I always do? It's not great. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I was correct on my matchups this time. Okay. It, it's really not great. No. However, it <laughs> it's not as bad as it could be. Simply because K. Rule has two projectiles, and one of them, uh, actually both of them, cover a lot of space for a lot of time. Yeah. Especially horizontally, which is where Sonic mostly is. Yeah. It's still uh. not great because Sonic is just simply Sonic, so he's fast. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one of the spin dashes, I don't remember which one. They're the same thing in my mind. I don't whatever i know there's differences i just don't care uh but one of them has iframes because it needs it um and plus he can jump in one of them so he could jump over the projectile and land on josh's head so definitely not gonna be the most enjoyable game of josh's life trying to figure out ways around sonic's options but I mean, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do, and it's not impossible for Josh. We've seen him do crazier things before. So, we'll see what's gonna happen here. Um, waiting for the taunt, and there it goes. There we are. And huh? that's gonna be really good for this matchup. This is why I was saying that it's probably not as bad as it possibly could be, but it's still Sonic against a big body. It's not going to be the most pleasant. Yeah, but, like, didn't you have a choice to not go into that? But, notice that Josh's game plan is going to be a lot of projectiles to cover horizontal space. If he did not have the stock advantage forcing the Sonic to approach, this game plan wouldn't work. So the fact that Chris got that stock on the Sonic and just by default giving Josh the stock lead, enabling his game plan, is so critical here. And Josh putting that to use, just playing very slow, allowing the Sonic to just stay on the half of the screen if he wants to, but knowing uh -huh. that if he tries to if he tries to come in, like he's going to have to at some point, he's gonna have to go through all this pressure. And Josh's yeah. pressure has been very solid here. And this is now it may look like this is an even fight, but remember, Josh is stuck up. And Josh is stock up and it has significantly more kill power as shown in that sure you can And he is also <coughs> now two stocks up. Um yeah, which is even better. You know, what's better mm -hmm. than a one stock lead? A two stock lead. Woo! Yep. Nice down smash there. Yeah, Josh has been utilizing his game plan of just covering this horizontal space so well. Utilizing the stock lead to cover at very, very nice. Yep. Sonic tries to catch him out during his up B, but not quite able to get the timing. Wow! I want to live an up smash at 150! What even? I, I hope <laughs> not. I hope that never happens. <laughs> what? <Yep. laughs> <laughs> the, the spring, the, the double spring hit. And yeah, then... the s spring is very, very, actually very good in those situations for ledge trapping like that. Little bit of a frame trap there, can't really do a huge amount about that, but look at the extra credit that he's gotten. It doesn't really matter that he couldn't get any more of that stock, because that stock was at such high percent. All he needs now is dead? to be using his next two, uh, next two stocks just to kill this Sonic, because Sonic can't take any more damage like he just did right there. Kiro, so, uh, is, bye. Yep. <laughs> he Kiro. is very dead. <laughs> Playing at a stock deficit against a K rule while you're at 140 with literally any stray hit killing you, including grab, not an easy situation to be in. So, Josh utilizing that, bringing us up around coming into this next one. Very good. Very, very good. So, we had some interesting things we're looking at right here. So, they have a Sora. I... Sonic and a Pikachu. 
I'm just never going to talk again on character predictions because I think every, almost every single time I've ever said that we've done research on character predictions, they've just thrown out something random. We said some. We said we talked about character predictions earlier at the last game. Yep. And you want to know, and we were correct. Sometimes people just say hi. Which funny is, Sonic. Uh, which is just lovely. Yep, mm-hmm. I'm definitely smiling on the inside, too. Yep, I'm, I'm definitely not just smiling on the outside. <laughs> anyway, looks like we are playing some fits here. Like to see it. I think leading fits is a good plan. See what they got cooking. I think he is a good lead. Yep, so... I'm expecting probably the Sora again. Yeah. Either that or they run the Sonic. I mean, if they have the Zelda or the Snake. Yeah, it might it might be an entirely different player. Seeing the seeing the Zelda or Snake would not. Uh, at this point, no, no character pick is gonna shock me anymore. I, are you sure about that? It's either none of them are gonna shock me, or everyone is gonna shock me because I don't I don't know what they're playing anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> if you see a random Kazuya appear on screen. If they pick Kazuya. Sure, man. I don't know. <laughs> okay, but here, okay. But what would really shock you and me, I think everyone here, is if they went Steve. Because Steve is banned currently. Well, that, that we would just say you can't do that. I know, so, but it would shock us. I'd be more confused than anything. <laughs> like, wh why? Bro well, didn't would read be the rule book. confused and shocked. Yeah, bro didn't read the rule book. That happened, so. <laughs> that uh, I, like. So apparently we have two new characters added to their lineup that they could play. Which means that we are expecting either Zelda or Snake, neither of which we saw last round. Pikachu, Sonic, and Sora. To be fair, we can't really say Ew. anything because um, we have our own... Because Chris, again, plays the entire roster. And... Yeah. Sometimes we just like to throw out the weirdest, most random mm. characters possible, like piranha plants. So I, let's see, my guess is I'm going to give three options. I think they either play the Sonic again, like lead the Sonic. I think they stick with their own game plan and go the Sora or you go the Zelda. Those if are my they have guesses. The Zelda. Those are my guesses. I wouldn't be terribly shocked if it was the snake, and I would the one I least expect is the Pikachu. That is my assumption here. So we'll see what they're cooking up here. Never mind. I'm never <laughs> speaking again, man. What in the world? Should we just call him Chris? <laughs> What the heck? Okay, in comes the Pikachu. Yay, alright, Pikachu. Wahoo. I'm never speaking on character predictions ever again, man. Alright, Fitz, you got it. Let's go. Let's go. This is uh, this is going to be a hard battle right now. But yeah, this is not going to be easy. But if you can take two stocks, that will be at least a very good placement for... Um, or whoever goes in next, who we can take a wild guess as who's going in. Yeah, <laughs> even even just taking one will heavily lighten this burden on the next player here. Assuming Fitz doesn't just take it because he could. He it, could. It'll, it'll, he it'll could. be difficult, but he has done wilder and more outlandish things in the past. So. Yep. Our almost every person we have played has some wilder and crazier things in the past. So. Sure do, and you know, Fitz has proven himself to be capable of it multiple times. So, we are throwing in, um, so, just seeing a lot of different options, but very close game overall. Yeah, um, no, I love how close Fitz is keeping this, showing from last time that he's learned a little bit, and not, not as shaken often... I'm telling you, Fitz, with these random F smashes when you run, when he just knows that you're gonna run at him, is some of the <laughs> best things about his play, because it is annoying as heck. Unfortunately, the Pikachu is holding a bell right now. That is one of the scariest sights I've ever seen in my life. I would like to stop, please. 
I, I would like him to stop. <laughs> well, the Pikachu is no longer holding a bell, so you should be perfectly fine. All right, well, Fitz does survive this. Yep. So, Chris, Pikachu... But... Honestly, I think this Kalos pick, although I don't think that we were expecting the Pikachu. I mean, I, I don't know what they were expecting in the back room there, but I think the Kalos pick was actually really good. Um, it gives, it makes T-Jolts a lot more annoying to deal with, but you do have Hydrant to kind of set up that wall there to stop it, which is handy. And then yeah. also it makes it so Pikachu can struggle killing a little bit. So um, still keeping this really even. Um, and that's really the main thing Fitz needs to go for. I love how close Fitz is keeping the, Fitz's F smashes. I swear. <laughs> They're insane. <laughs> My dude is simply different. <laughs> why, why don't you just start predicting when the F smash is going to come out? I can't. Otherwise, I wouldn't get hit by them. <laughs> <laughs> he is clinically different. Look at how much damage he is doing here. Keeping it not even just... He is not keeping it even. He is keeping it ahead right now. This is incredible to see. Just what a change in tone here from the last time we saw Fitz play this Pikachu. Yep. This pressure is so solid. Love this. And we're just seeing um, this Pikachu trying to find ways to counter this Pac-Man. Um, seeing a little bit of desperation in really? this Pikachu. Uh, Pac-Man couldn't jab Pikachu's dash attack on shield because he down smashed. Pikachu is such a small little boy. Unfortunately, Fitz is dying, died there, but there is only one strong, solid hit away from this Pikachu. Well, now you're getting back aired by Pikachu, so that's oh, not yeah. entirely pleasant. So, But as long as Fitz can get this uh, one, one more stock, that is so big. That is so good. So, nice. Nice punish. Nice punish. He's going to go past the ledge, isn't he? Well, almost. Nice. Oh, nice job. I like it. the punish. See, I'm gonna stop predicting anything ever anymore because every single time I have been wrong. <laughs> well, we'll see. What, we'll see what happens. Anyway. No, Fitz is having some incredible coverage right now. Now you just have to. Now you just have to get the stock. But uh, you've shown that you can do it. It is not impossible in the slightest. So still just kind of holding this neutral. That's um, unfortunate. Yikes! Uh, Pikachu F Smash covers so many options. It is such a big move. One more stock fits. That's all you need. This could be it. There it yes. is. Very, very nice. Good job, Fitz. And you know, this stock is not impossible to take. It's going to be challenging. But look at this opening Fitz has. Getting 40%, almost 40%, out of that opening. That's big. You just gotta avoid Pikachu's combo starters, which uh, is easier said than done. I mean, Pikachu's combo starters are most likely almost all of his moves. Yeah, and all of his moves are uh, pretty busted. However, <laughs> Fitz getting off the ledge. Did he just try to footstool him? Fitz, you are chefing, my guy. I love this. He actually tried to footstool the Pikachu. Bro is actively in the kitchen. Uh, that T Jolt dash tag is going to seal it, but two stocks keeping it that even is incredible. Because the Pikachu last round, last, last round that we just watched, Pikachu was the main issue. He was so strong in taking so many stocks. It's just out of the gate making it so he has one stock left. That's big. That is incredible. So now we just have to take this Pikachu stock without losing any of our own. And frankly, honest, seeing what we're sending in, I think that should be no problem for this person. It is. It is definitely doable. See? We have done it before. Now we just have to do it again. Having a debate of all time. Oh, never mind. We, we... Nope. He he knows what worked last time. He knows what his game plan will be. Now the stage pick. This is going to be pretty darn important here. What do I think that we want? I thought you said you weren't going to try and predict what we want. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, at this point, I'm about to just start saying all the stages we don't want, just so we don't go to those ones. So, um, uh, Great Cave <laughs> Offensive. Uh, that that is rest. a stage we don't particularly want. Yeah, I, I will agree with you on that. All Rest, uh, Palace. Oh, what else? Honestly, I'd be fine with All Rest. It sounds hype. But it's got, like, this little hill area. I don't know. Well, if you go the Battlefield version, it actually is just oh. uh, Rex's house. Oh, like, just buy them. Um, I so, I think, ideally, we probably go Smash Bros. I think that's probably the best stage, uh, yeah. which means it probably got banned. So, yep. the second best one is probably either small or PS2. I was looking us. like we're going small, so. Okay, I wonder what the other bands were. It was probably Smashville, probably Hollow, and probably. PS2 maybe? I, I, I'm i just taking mostly shots in the dark of what the bands are. And at the end of the day, this doesn't matter because we are going to my favorite legal stage. So let's get it. Alright, and this Pikachu will have to take two stocks off. And we will see what happens with this Ness into a Pikachu. Like, what happened before. So. Chris has showed that he can do it. Now you just have to do it again. Whoa. All right. So, as the Pikachu slowly descends to his death, we can get this game started. Let's get it, Chris. You just need to get this one stock, and this is a good way to start it. Calling out his jump a little bit. I'd love to see that. Yep, seeing the 10%, 15 to 16, keeping it very even. Oh, well, of course. Well, now you've been back here by Pikachu, which, again, is not a very pleasurable experience, I will say. Uh, because it's generally followed by, guess what, another back air. Um, but again, Chris is a little bit behind here. Incredible spot dodge read. Incredible spot dodge read. That just even up the percent. Just like that. Yep. Did Ness just duck under that T-Jolt with Pika- You know, if you're gonna interrupt me, that's my most preferable way that you're gonna interrupt me. So you know what? Fair enough, King. <laughs> <laughs> and you just hear Chris laughing from the background. As he should be, because... What just happened? Could you know, care, care to elaborate? We we get interrupted a lot. And that I, I'll be honest, that's my favorite way to get interrupted. Well, not by that. I mean, like, how, but... huh? What just happened besides the fire and a bat? I mean, first off, he ducked under a T-Jolt by Hurtbox shifting with the PK fire, which I'm telling you was not intentional. However, that is hilarious. Uh, but also, Pikachu is just really light. And that F smash had just, just, just a slight, just a little sprinkle, just a little tad bit of charge on it. So, using that PK fire brought him up to, what was it, like, 93, and then, oh, uh, he died Ness so fast. F-Smash. Ness F-Smash is also not, not that weak. It is not something to be scoffed at, so, that is, best case scenario for us. Just getting that stock out of the way quickly, solidly, no stock loss on our side either. Definitely, definitely what we wanted to see. Um, so, who do we think we're going to th they're going to throw in? Man, I'm just going to start saying random characters. Let's see. Just, uh, let's just hear your guess. Uh, like, well, actual guess. L l let me pull up a roster. I'm just going to start saying random no, freaking characters. No, we don't characters. want that. Like, your actual guess. <laughs> okay, my actual we got, guess. We got four choices. Ow. Um, Mainly because it's absolutely hilarious when you're like, ow. My actual guess... Let's see, the Pikachu is out. Um, we got Zelda, Snake, Sora, and Sonic. Almost all of those are S names, by the way. That, yes. that is hilarious. Um, my guess is Sora or Zelda. I think Zelda would probably be the best choice here. But Either Sora or Zelda. And they've shown the Zor Sora before already. So my guess is the Sora. But, I mean, I could... 
could be the Zelda, but those are my guesses. Oh. Um, I would, I would not expect to see the snake, just because it's snake in the nest, and they do just simply have better matchups available to them. I think it's probably the Sora, judging how Sora has a sword, can go off stage quite well. What? <laughs> I'm telling you, I am telling you, I am <laughs> never predicting a character again. PT, everybody, let's go, let's get it. All right, we have not seen this character before. Uh, sh sure, why not? All righty, let's, let's go. You know what? I prefer this to all the other characters we just mentioned. So you know what? I'm in. <laughs> okay, well, we got Purple Squirtle on the side. Um, the Pokemon Trader is vibing right now, apparently. <laughs> uh, man. So, I don't... I don't... Uh, that's it. I just don't. I don't you, know you anymore, don't, man. You don't. No, but Chris pre showing his fluidity in his movement here. Using those uh, PK Magnet stalls to have some buttery smooth movement across the platform trying to get yep. some pressure on getting some fire in wow so much damage damage uh go, switching to ivy sword though just to make it a little bit he uh choose a character that's a little bit heavier and also with some better kill options than um squirtle and as you can see yep. he's already up to 80 percent however uh he could be dead here blair blitz okay that was not ex expected at that angle but you know it did eventually work and now He's now also... it's basically even yeah fair enough um, they're both very easy to charizard kill right has now. some incredible kill i'm surprised no back throw um uh, it probably wouldn't have killed but could have been close could have died it badly and that will yep. that will tip. that will kill though and now we're back to um uh ivysaur I do not disagree with the decision to just stick Ivy. I think Ivy is probably the best Pokemon for them to go right now. Squirtle is definitely not bad. Yeah. Um, Squirtle's main use, I've noticed, um, this is somebody who occasionally sees Pokemon played, is Squirtle has a lot of usage going in against very fast characters like Pikachu, or very slow characters. Mm -hmm. But other than that, he doesn't really have his own use. Squirtle is generally your low percent damage racking character. Mostly, uh, he's, he's your frame data oppressing Pokemon. Um, your neutral, like actual, like just neutral as in the game state uh, Pokemon is Ivysaur. Um, and then Charizard is uh, the screw it we ball Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be broken if you could actually choose which Pokemon you brought in? At I time? would cry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm not crying right now because that ain't an option. And Chris has no. been doing some incredible percent racking already at 130 on this Charizard. So not going to take too many more hits from Ness to kill. Ness's straight hits kill surprisingly well like that one yep. right there. Thanks for proving me right, Chris. I appreciate it. And we're seeing the Ivy Sort coming back out again, trying to take some damage, uh, bringing Ness up to 40%, but this is not good going into a stock lead, especially against a Ness with 21 already on the Bulbasaur. We're almost halfway there. I, I am telling you, I want to see... Uh, well, that is also uh, a way to even it up. You know, I want to see Chris's Ness not die. But, no, but back to what I was saying. I want to see Chris's nest more. Um, he doesn't get to pull it out very often, but every single time he does, it has rolled. His, his nest is so solid. This person, Pokemon, Pokemon trainer, bringing out the Charizard very early on here. Um, very interesting choice, I would say. And that would be why Charizard back air is... Preposterous. Yep. Yeah. And now we know that was who, a little insane. We know who we're throwing in, right? Right. Yeah. Please don't say we just randomly bring out some care some person who I've just never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're throwing you in. What? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, um, Weston just teleports away. Chris appears in his spot. Goodbye. My and there's need just me. a pit on screen. Actually, no, it'd be funnier would, if you pulled out the Joker. <laughs> I would rather not. Actually. Well, I know you'd rather not, but... <sighs> Mostly because I'd probably have to go into a Sonic right after. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you are the best matchup for Sonic. I think that's just objectively true. <laughs> You have said it yourself. Yeah, that was... Half of the things yeah. I say here on stream, I've picked up from you all. And see, that's where you've strayed off of the path of righteousness, is listening to us. <laughs> but it is funny <laughs> to listen to you all. Hey, that's why that's why we're on comms, because it makes it more entertaining. It's, so. it's very entertaining. <laughs> yep, so we're going into a bit of a, a bit of Josh gameplay here. Oh um, my word, I this, so this character going in with Josh is very interesting. Um obviously I don't hate the choice. Um because there's not really a better option for him to there go. There really ideally. isn't. There really isn't. I, <laughs> I'm just mildly upset that I have yet to get a single character prediction right. <laughs> because what the heck? Well, hey, we still got one after this, and you can try. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna pull up a roster, <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just gonna guess. Imagine <laughs> though, if you got it correct. Yeah, it's gonna be wild. Um. He's I'm pull breaking out the Super Smash Bros. roster. No, I'm pulling up a randomizer is what I'm doing, because at this point <laughs> he's probably going to have a better chance of getting it right than I do. <laughs> well, unless it like, says Pikachu or um, Pokemon Trainer, I think he'll have a better chance than you. But then I... again, there has been the times where we have just thrown in Chris, then K. Rule, then K. Rule. You know, <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's get it. Let's get into it. We have got a little bit of a deficit to go on to. It is not the worst thing in the world. Um, just one stock. But, you know, this is not entirely uh, what people would call a favorable matchup. So we'll see how Josh can handle it here. So this is an interesting matchup. Ari taking 17% right off the get-go against Squirtle. Um, this is where I was saying where Squirtle does thrive is going against slower characters, slower, heavier characters, mainly just because... What? No! <laughs> I... <laughs> okay, never mind. We just no longer talk about uh, the Pokemon Trainer versus K. Rule matchup. Josh! What the heck? <laughs> Keep in mind, there was a very loud Chris scream from the other room. What even? <laughs> and with words that I cannot repeat on here. Okay. Okay. So, to explain that interaction, <laughs> the Squirtle did side B, um, which makes him dash forward and makes him invincible or whatever. Josh dash attacked, which meant that he had belly armor. So it, the, it, the, his withdrawal claimed the belly armor, so he didn't go onto stage. He bounced off. And he had the hit stun from it. He came out of the end lag of um, the withdrawal as Josh ran off stage and just... And just killed him. <laughs> um, very bold move from Josh, and it worked. <laughs> Josh, 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 Josh. What? So anyway, what, what the heck? What character do we think they're sending in? All right, let's see. What character do we think we got? All right, I pulled up the randomizer. What character we got? All right, let's see. Let's okay, see, see, we're see. they're pulling out a Falco, apparently. <laughs> uh, you know what? That's probably a better chance of getting it right than I have. So we'll go with that. Imagine if they actually I get it right. <laughs> I don't know anymore, man. <laughs> so, um, but looking at that, um, 
actually thinking about it, if for some reason one of the three characters that showed up, or two characters that showed up before shows up again, or the two characters that we research shows up, yeah. You know. At this point, I would actually be more surprised if it's one of the characters we've seen and researched. Like, <laughs> well, I, I don't know what's happening anymore, man. No, if man. one of the research <laughs> characters show up, I would probably be most surprised. If it's one of the characters we're expecting, I will be surprised. Yeah, um... That, that's just how it's gonna go because I don't even know, man. So the I pulled up a randomizer. I think that genuinely is the best. I think that randomizer has a better chance of getting yeah. it right than I do. So, so we're gonna see a Falco here. <laughs> so the art character that they played was Sonic, and they played Sora. Yep, they played Sonic, Sora. Uh, we researched a snake and a Zelda. I think the Sonic might be a good choice. If we're like genuinely thinking like what would be the best choice. What would be the best? No. 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 The best choice for them, which is going to be really bad for us, is Sora. Okay. That's Sora I is one of K. Rule's actual worst matchups in the entire game, if not the worst. And there are matchups like Pikachu and Game and & Watch yep, and stuff in this game. Yep. Yeah. So there was no Falco. We <coughs> we apologize. That was incorrect. You know, the randomizer just should have been better. Uh, <laughs> so there's one main reason this matchup is truly terrible for K. Rool. Maybe his floatiness? No. No. Down B. Down B go burr. Ah. Um, Sora's counter works a little differently than everyone, than any other counter in the game, in the fact that every other counter, when you hit it, like, you're, the character that's hitting the counter doesn't, like, stop doing their move, they just get hit for it. Um, Sora's counter actually stuns you, and then hits you, so, so it basically makes it... Josh is coming down swinging. He wants you dead now. Josh, Josh is like, you did not get away with that. But um, the reason the reason that's so bad is that normally counters don't work on K. Rule's Uppy because it doesn't stun him. He just grabs ledge or he just flies past it. Well, Sora's doesn't do that. It's very, so very cool, yeah. Sora can actually just counter and just make it so K. Rule isn't allowed to recover. But I don't know that Sora knows that. So we're gonna hope uh, that he doesn't. And getting that spike just doesn't matter because it's Sora, and yeah, of, course, of course he can he can just recover from literally anywhere. Yeah, he he is three up these actually. <laughs> uh yeah he is three. Well he can side B out of his up B, which is what makes his distance so good. Sliding F tilt takes the stock there. This is very Josh. good showing from Josh in this bad matchup here. Um. Josh is in a very good spot right now, going up against Sora, so... The good thing is that Sora's counter doesn't reflect projectiles, which, if it did, I would probably cry, because that would be a DLC moment out of all time. Of oh, technically, Sora's counter does actually make your the projectiles his, they just pass through him, they don't reflect. I see. Um, so that only really matters in uh, free-for-alls. Yeah, or in what's like it called? free for alls, doubles, anything yeah. with more than one opponent is really the only time it matters. Plus, you have a Pikachu on screen, but even then, I think the Pikachu. Was... But uh, we've already dealt with their Pikachu, so that's not an issue. Yeah. <laughs> Almost killed, by the way. Probably would have killed. Actually, it would have been close. But Josh, already showing that he is looking for this kill. He he's got the bloodlust now. He wants this stock and he wants it done with. He doesn't want to give the Sora the chance to figure out this matchup, what he needs to do. Yep, Sora counter doesn't work, but we already talked about this. If you're listening to the stream, you'd know. Yeah, just, just tune into the stream. You're not allowed to do that, but just Bonk. and there he is. <laughs> there is Josh with the nice landing coverage with the dash attack. A hard fought, but clean 2-0. So that will conclude Smashy Bros double header that we had today. But uh, we actually, right after this, we have some Rocket League. So tune into that and thank you guys for watching. Thank you.